Brian from the Amenta. Welcome to Nightbreed. How's it going, man? Very well. Thanks for having me back. Um, always a pleasure. Yeah, nice, man. Cool. So we last spoke in uh, March 2021 when, uh, yeah, Revelator came out February that year and um, I had you on the radio show. Back there. So we couldn't see each other back then. It was a telephone call. Like, it was a little bit different to this, obviously. Yeah, fucking yeah. technology. Look out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's it. <laughs> much to my much to my displeasure. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, hey, it's, it's handy but annoying. I agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, good. <laughs> um. So. Uh, yeah, Revelator came out, great album, obviously. Um, and then August of that year, you guys put out uh, Solip Schism, a two-song EP with a really similar cover design. Um, were those two songs recorded during, you know, while you were writing, recording Revelator? Yes, it, the Solip Schism was part of the Revelator sessions. It was meant to be on the album. Um it was only when we got to the point of trying to arrange the track listing when we hit a fair bit of friction trying to figure out how to make this thing flow in a way that feels cohesive. And um, after much deliberation, that song ended up being uh, shelved, basically. Um, not because it was a weaker song on the album, just because it felt like regardless of what configuration we went with something didn't work and it was only once we took that one out of the equation we managed to find a flow so mm. we got yeah. there um and thankfully um dmp were very supportive in giving that song its own mini release afterwards um with an instrumental track which we used an edited version for the album trailer and um so that was actually really exciting for that instrumental to have its moment um yeah. to see the light so because yeah that's one of tim's um instrumentals that i really enjoyed so it was really cool to for that the full version of that to you know see the light with sort of schism and the response was really positive so yeah a really cool sort of um aftertaste kind of thing from the album that went down really well so yeah and metastasis uh who did the artwork for the album um we just pitched it to him oh cool yeah um, since since it, the song and well, both of those tracks were part of the revelator sessions um it just made sense to keep the visual theme cohesive with that um mm. so we pitched it to him and he went back into his creation and mm. um and and just played around with it so yeah. that's it yeah it's cool it's a good way to do it because i know um Carcass's album before last, they did that, right? Like they brought out the album, then maybe six months later or something, they had that EP and it was a similar kind of cover design. And, you know, the, I guess it's probably the same idea as, you know, the same session, that kind of thing. It's cool. Like I'll, it's a good I'll move, have to you know? take your word for it. Yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm very out of the loop. I'm very out of the loop with uh, um, modern releases. Um, I yeah. just miss it. I miss a lot of stuff. It's, it's, it's discussions like this where I get, you know it's it's really just these kind of discussions where i'm like oh fuck i didn't know that happened i better check that out because yeah, yeah. i'm just so kind of removed from <laughs> social that. media and yeah yeah and, you know where where people tend to get most of their info from these days i guess and mm. Mm. um yeah but yeah thanks yeah. for the tip i'll i'll <laughs> check yeah. out the the carcass ep that came after yeah. the yeah, the, the I'll <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. <laughs> it is a funny thing, actually, talking social media. Like, um, for my personal life, I'd left all that like, behind. Like, I'd gone, I was like, nah, fuck all this or whatever. And I started putting music out and doing this again. And I was like, 
oh fuck, I'm gonna have to buddy get on there again. You know what I mean? Like it's such a weird world. We, yeah. you know, but anyway, that's an aside. It's work. It is. It, <laughs> it is yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know. Like, all right. So, um, 2021 August, another uh, release came out with the Amenta on it. Um, it was the uh, Aborum split. So they they had the track Radiophobia, and the Amenta had the track Twined Towers. Um. So yeah, how did that all come together? To be perfectly honest, I don't remember how that came together, but I'm glad it did because it was a really unique, oddball, um, very limited release cassette with a fantastic split between two bands that are really... um, uh, relevant to each other, but also very unique and sort of pushing boundaries in their own ways. So, I've I've been a uh, an admirer of a Borum for years, and uh, had it 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 possibly has something to do. It more than likely has something to do with the the guest vocal stuff that I did with those guys. A few years ago, I've, I have, can't remember how long ago, mm. um, but yeah, a few years ago, um, I was asked to do some guest vocal stuff for two songs on one of their rec- more recent albums. Um, we we had toured in Europe with a couple of members. I'm pretty sure it was two members. Um, who were part of a lineup of a Borum at at some point? They may have only been on one or two albums. I, I'm not sure, but um, we became very um, good mates with those guys during that tour. And um, one of the guys got in touch with me. It's kind of coming back to me now. Um, yeah, cool. One of the guys got in touch with me at some point saying, hey, I also play in a Borum. Um, we've been chatting about potentially getting you involved in maybe a couple of songs. And we had a bit of back and forth for a while. And at one point, I just kind of said goodbye to it because I thought, oh, it's one of those things where there's talk and nothing happens. But eventually, I just got an email. Hey, man, it'd be great to get you involved in this album here's some songs let me know what you think i'll send you lyrics and stuff if you're keen i was like oh cool so um yeah checked it out really cool album um and yeah i I just played around with some things he sent me some suggestions of sections um that would be good to have me involved with and i just tracked a bunch of stuff sent it back with some some new suggestions of oh this kind of popped into my head I thought this could work well there and it, it was just it was generally just pretty cool, um, yeah. And that was that, and then um, I don't know how much longer it was before that cassette thing popped up, mm. but um, I'd I'd say it must have had something to do with that connection, but yeah, yeah the the Twine Towers um, the I meant a, a Borum split was a really cool, unique kind of little moment in time that um probably only the kind of thing hardcore collectors would know about and own a copy of but um but those things are fun i I like that stuff yeah yeah that's cool um so the last time i saw you on stage was you know a couple of months back when uh pathogen had their big reunion gig and you were on stage for plague like i remember plague back in the day but um did you have anything to do with them before you know that gig plague were a pretty significant band to me as a as a teenager first attending local shows mm. i'd be have mates from bands sneaking me into gigs and stuff like that and um plague were really active at, the, at that time and uh just playing a super super tight um unique kind of oddball death metal 
fairly techy in some areas with some elements of thrash and just a really um, no nonsense kind of bash your head in kind of death metal band. Really, um, I loved I loved the everything about the guitar work and just a really badass, unrelenting kind of you know interesting band. Um, so I would always go. I'd always make an effort to. If they were on a bill, I'd be like, "Fuck, I gotta, I gotta go to that." Um, so I watched them for years, and uh, they toured with, they did a tour with Cannibal Corpse at some point, and during that tour, like, what happens with a lot of bands, um, if you don't break up during your first attempt at playing a show, it's possibly going to be the first time you try doing a demo and if you get through that then the next thing is you try touring and see if you're still a band at the end of that and yeah. uh the singer ended up out of the band um after that tour so they basically disappeared for years and then just out of the blue got in touch with me and said, Hey, we've just been asked to do a couple of shows with Psychroptic when they're coming over. Um, would you be up for learning the set? And I was, I just kind of went, ah, oh, I always liked Plague. So fuck it. Yeah, yeah cool. All right. I'll learn the set. And, um, um, yeah, the, the drummer actually, actually, left for a few years to play with the berserker yeah. um so he was touring uh, europe and the states for quite a while um with the berserker um until he had a fairly horrific injury going to, going down a flight of stairs i think in the states and it, it fucked his spine pretty pretty badly so he, he he wasn't sure that he was ever going to play drums again, but um, he kind of disappeared uh, for a while. But then all of a sudden, I'm asked, "Hey, can you sing for Plague?" And I was like, "Fuck, who's who's drumming?" Yeah. Oh, you know, oh, we're we're back together. He's it, he's in excruciating pain playing drums, but um, he fucking loves it. So we're jamming again. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. If he can do that, then. I should probably, you know, I can probably learn the, learn the vocal part. So, yeah. Cool. So, like, they kind of pop up once every now and then. I, um, at one point it was ten years between gigs. Cool. Hit me, up. hey, we've just been asked to play this festival. Could you do it? Oh yeah, cool. I'll see, see if I can, how many of the words I can remember, and we'll have a jam. Cool. So it was one of those kind of things where they'd sort of popped up. Hey, we're we've been asked to play the show and yeah yeah so that was a that was a tricky one though because i think i only had a week to it was like just over a week a couple of days over a week to re relearn all the songs yeah. and i think and i only had one rehearsal with them but somehow got it over the line so yeah, yeah. thank fuck for that <laughs> yes man cool um so obviously the biggest news ever you guys are supporting Bloody emperor. <laughs> That's huge, man. Like, how good is that? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. A fantastic seminal black metal um, yeah. giants. And uh, they've really, they've always had a very unique voice in extreme music and within black metal as well. Like, they're a yeah, real right. standalone yeah. band that's had their own sound, their own approach to doing things and um yeah i've always i've always admired emperor since i f first time i probably heard him was in actually probably would have been kind of late high school the first time i heard any of their stuff but mm. um yeah i've always really admired them and um Isan's, uh solo stuff yeah you know i really appreciate what he does with his solo stuff and yeah it, um so that popped up and that was a very easy thing to say absolutely yeah let's do it yeah, of course man. yeah yeah so um how's uh you know preps prep going like what's the uh what's the set list looking like for you guys have you sort of figured out you know 
Oh, I'm actually looking at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just got back from Sydney on. I, I, I went over for rehearsals last weekend, mm. um, which is cool. So just booked out a jam room for a few days in a row. Let's see how we go. See how rusty we are. Um, oh, sure. I mean, we had we haven't we haven't. We actually haven't toured uh, for a decade. That's yeah, wow. Okay. So we haven't played. So, I mean, we're only playing three shows for this tour. We're not going to NZ, sadly, but um, we're, we're playing Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, and yeah. it's the first time we've been to either of those cities in 10 years, which mm. is fucking mental. I, just, I can't believe it's been that long, but mm. there you go. Um, so that'll be cool because there was so much um, incredible support from well from Australia. We had the Australian metal scene in general. We had so much incredible support um, for the last album release, yeah. and haven't had a chance to to play. To um, so we played one show in Tassie. Um, Fuck, was it a year ago, two years ago? Was it either a year or two ago, something like that? Yeah. And, um, and now this, so we're pretty excited to pull it together and get out there and play some shows to um, some, a few Australian cities. Sadly, we're not playing in WA, we're not playing in Adelaide. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah. You know, there's there's... It'd be nice to be able to hit the lot, but um, this is what's popped up, and we can all manage to do it. You know, we've all sort of um, organised ourselves to, you know, make it happen. So there we go. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. But yeah. Man. Sorry, uh, you asked about the set list, and oh yeah, yeah. We are uh, basically we just go. All right, we've got to cover everything. So we're covering, um, we're covering all eras of the the band from, yeah, from Acasis. We've got some Acasis stuff. We've got some non stuff. We've got some Void stuff. We've got some Flesh Is Air stuff, and we've got some Revelator stuff. So we've managed to kind of squeeze a bit of everything into the set. So hopefully, no one's too. Um, upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone's got their favourite little sort of yeah. era. So, yeah. you know, we'll try and put a bit of everything out there and um, yeah. and enjoy it at the same time. So, yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. Um, and last time we spoke, we were talking about, like, the music videos and your whole kind of rubber mask thing and everything. Is there any of that kind of – is there any of those visual elements making it to the stage? Well, the thing is, because we didn't get to tour Revelator, mm. um, it's a shame to to not bring to not bring those visuals to the stage. You know, even though it kind of feels like that's old news now, and it's something we it feels like it was so long ago. Um, mm. But we haven't played, so yeah. yeah. Um, and we we did. It was met with such a, a beautiful reception from the Aussie metal scene. So it'd be a waste not to bring that to the stage. So we we brought it to Dark Mofo in Tassie, yeah, um, which was particularly cool because it was at, it, we played in a, a theatre. This yeah. incredible. Um, gorgeous theater over there which was it was cool but it was also pretty odd because you know it's a theater so it's all yeah. seated you know um and i think there were rules at the time where you're not allowed to stand up oh uh, like COVID rules, right? yeah yeah this yeah. week fucking government bullshit with you know you're not allowed to do this you're not allowed to do that so um, that was kind of annoying, but at the same time, it was kind of fun because it was so it was so bizarre, and yeah, you've got, yeah. you, you're just playing to this 
gorgeous, massive theatre full of people off their face, um, <laughs> largely, you know, drunk people sit, sitting in their seats, just kind yeah. of... <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> like, oh, I want to stand up, but I'm not allowed. Yeah. Not to do. <laughs> anyway, yeah, don't yeah. get me started. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so this will be a refreshing, I imagine, coming onto the stage again normally, you know. Oh, it'll be weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully yeah. we're allowed. <laughs> yes. These things yeah. change overnight, so yeah, you know, yeah, no, right, yeah. tomorrow yeah. we might not be allowed. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, Fingers so, crossed, we'll be yeah, right. Man, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure that you will be then. Um, so outside of the Amenta, have you got? have you had any other sort of musical things on the go? The only thing, oh, what have I done? Um, oh, there was a, there was a, there was a side project I did with. Uh, this is an, a band we toured with um, in two thousand nine. Uh, fantastic uh, progressive death metal band from Montreal called Augury. Phenomenal um, musos. Brilliant band. Um, we became brothers on that tour, and, and you know it's been such a long time, but um, the connection's always the same. So you know we don't stay in touch all the time, but even the little snippets, it still feels like you're talking to your mate from yeah. from the van, you know, um, from the tour. So. One of the guitarists from Augury hit me up and fuck, when was this? This might have even been like two years ago. It wasn't recently. But anyway, um, I did do an album with him, which wasn't an Augury thing. It was just a, a side project thing. He does, he actually has a solo project called Humanoid, which is phenomenal. Mm. Brilliant. Um, brilliant project um they've only done two albums but it's it's uh it's pretty epic progressive stuff mm. and um yeah he hit me up saying hey i had you in mind for this this project i've put together it's a five song ep um the band name is tellurian agony and um i had you in mind for vocals um it'll be great to work together and so i said send me the songs and it was it's a ripping kind of progressive thrash with with a good balance of kind of 80s european influence as well as kind of bay area um yeah yeah his thrash kind of stuff um the elements that i enjoy of you know both of those sides he's kind of got this great he's he's kind of pulled them together in this cool ways and of all people he's he had um robin um stone track drums for it who who has who's part of the amenta family and we've we toured a lot with him and he's he tracked drums for fleshy's air um so that was really really fun because uh that tour that we did with augury um robin actually played drums for both bands for that entire tour so mm. 38 shows in 40 days and he mm. played drums for these two ridiculously ex um you know endurance based mm. bands you know as a drummer it's it's a real in kind of endurance thing like a lot of high you know high tempo mm lasting and carrying on so to do a release with with matt from augury and frog on drums was really really fun so that that's one random thing that i've done um it hasn't seen the light of day yet because i think once it was all tracked he needed a breather from it so sure. it's, been, yeah. it's being it'll be mixed and released at some point but um so there was that and apart from that um there's an artist in Wisconsin that is 
re- connected with me on Instagram at some point a couple of years ago mm. um, as a fan of Bimenta and I looked at her um, artwork and was really blown away by her stuff. Just mm. really otherworldly, uh, really atmospheric, very original, really unique and and haunting. Um, mm. And I just, you know, thought far out. Uh, this stuff needs to be seen. This this needs to be out there. Um, and so, yeah, that's been an, a cool thing. Following her stuff as she's been exploring different things, and then um, she got in touch with me one day. Recently, this this was actually recently. Her name's Alexandra Panic. Um, She's from St. Petersburg, um, but she has been living in Wisconsin for a little while now, I think, and um, had an exhibition that she wanted me to, well, she she wanted, she wanted some kind of audio mm. um, atmosphere as part of her exhibition. So she got in touch with me about doing some spoken word stuff. So, um, yeah, really kind of random um, project that was just, I don't know what it ended up being. It was like a seven-minute track or something of just spoken word and um, weirdo atmospheric shit that I'd sort of mangled together and sent it it over. And um, she was thrilled with it. We're on the same page. I was just trying to compliment her artwork that's all i cared about was like Mm. this needs to i need to do justice to this i'm gonna do what feels right to me hopefully it feels right to her and she got back to me and just said thank you thank you thank you this is i'm so excited about this so that exhibition i think is still running at the moment um because it's very fresh but um yeah amazing um artist and it was a really fun thing to be involved in that yeah, that's cool. Man. Awesome. Um, and what about music outside of your own stuff? What have you been listening to lately, Kate? Right. Uh, fuck. To be honest, I mean, I was... I got to a point of burnout that was so bad that for the first time in my life, I couldn't even listen to music at all. I just wasn't... Li- I was... For the first time ever, I was just... I couldn't fathom the idea of listening to music and it was, it dragged on for maybe six months or something. And I was thinking to myself, fuck, I I don't know if I'm ever going to give a shit about music ever again. I'm just, I'm just so, um, just so burnt out. Mm. Um, just in general, just, you know, music stuff, life stuff, just, I just want a breather from from things and I had no joy in listening to music. Every now and then I'd try to just because but I always listen to music, you know. I don't feel like it, but it's weird that I'm not listening to it, so I'm just going to put something on and I'd listen to one or two songs and just go, fucking no, shut the fuck up. Mm. Silence. So I didn't know whether I was going to, kind of come back from that but um at some point a song pops into my head and i listen to it and i'm ah i'm enjoying listening to this and then you know a little bit later down the track i'm actually singing to some stuff again ah cool so i still enjoy singing okay that's something so i might do i might continue doing something see what happens um but it's it's strange um I haven't really been listening to much metal um, for a while. I'm still listening to a fair amount of. I'm 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 always listening to dark stuff, mm, sure. whether it's yeah. whether it's blues or um, or rock or progressive rock. It's a lot of old stuff. Lately, it's been largely. A lot of sort of 70s blues rock progressive rock 
and experimental shit that doesn't really fit into anything. So a lot okay. of it, like, mm. um, I'm a, a massive Swans fan. I've been revisiting a lot of Swan stuff and Unstutzen, Neubauten. Mm. Um, a lot of, yeah, and, and, and even branching out into s some um, kind of aggressive kind of um, funk shit, which is strange because I never thought funk was a, a world that would have much that w would grab me, but um, there's been bits and pieces of really progressive, really experimental, really edgy kind of um, stuff from the 70s that has kind of made me go far oh, out. Wow, okay, there's something yeah. in there. All sorts of bits and pieces. The, it's really only just recently with um, saying yes to playing some shows again yeah. that I've kind of felt obliged to make an effort to start listening to some extreme, you know, metal again. So, you know, I listen to a, um, uh, actually just jamming um, in Sydney the other day. Uh, one of the guys mentioned that it's the 25th year anniversary of um, Catacombs of Nefer and Carr by Nile, mm. which blew my fucking mind. Like, how has it been 25 years? Like, mm. Insane. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So I was listening to that in the car um, today and yesterday. So to answer your question, there you go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, cool. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, it's it's only just been recently bits and pieces of sort of mainly death metal stuff. Little bits of, of death metal have been creeping back into the car. Mm. Um, but more often than not, it's usually kind of it's usually old kind of um, blues rock stuff, which has kind of been a staple for me since I was a kid. It just yeah. never sort of goes away, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, dark, dark music in general, um, whether it's metal, whether it's rock, whether it's this or that, mm. if something about it that's affecting and actually, you know, you're affected by it. You've, you've, all of a sudden, you feel fucking traumatised. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> yeah, have yeah. to be metal to, to yeah, feel no, just had yeah. the shit kicked out of you, you know? Yeah, yeah. So of course, I yeah. guess that's the kind of the <laughs> main thing. Main factor for some yeah. reason we're, we're drawn to it and we keep going back to it yeah man, a cathartic thing mm. maybe it's a um self-destructive thing I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. a few different things but yeah yeah no i believe that sort of answered your question yeah no absolutely man, absolutely it is funny when you sort of psycho psychoanalyze yourself you're like oh why do i like this but then you just can't really explain it but somebody else you can imagine them being like oh this guy's fucked you know <laughs> it's a weird you know why would you do that to yourself yeah, yeah like, exactly like, yeah, would yeah. you prefer to have a good time <laughs> yeah 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 but good no. time music yeah yeah good time music sounds like shit like that's you know <laughs> yeah. flagellation yeah. all the way so. yeah yeah that's it man. yeah <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, look, um, uh, I'm sure uh, Emperor crowds are going to really, really fucking get into the self-flagellation going on with the event. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot um, of it in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, look, I'm definitely looking forward to it. It's been a little while, so hopefully you guys back together. We'll get some uh, we'll get some new Amenta soon. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 on its way. Yeah. Um, how soon? I can't I don't know, but oh, of course, yeah. 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 we're working on it. Yeah, no, too easy call. Cool. All right, man. Thanks for your time, Kane. And um, you know, best of luck on the tour and everything. I'm sure you're gonna have a blast, man. My absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, rock on. Yeah, man. Cheers, man. Cheers. See ya.